A question I've been getting asked recently is, can you build a pedal board with Velcro on the Boss BCB90X? Now the answer is yes, but in today's video, we're going to test it out and see how easy it is. With the Boss BCB90X, I'm really eager to test out and see how many pedals I can fit onto this pedal board. I think as a guitarist, you can get quite creative with your pedal order and pedal layout due to the size and the shape of the BCB90X and the fact that there's quite a lot of real estate. So I wanna make this guitar pedal board as versatile as possible. And to achieve this, I am going to use all 10 connections on the daisy chain power cable that is powered by the internal power supply. This will allow me to use 10 individual pedals simultaneously using one single power connection. Now obviously the major benefit of using the foam insert in combination with your BCB90X is the fact you can hide all of your excess cables inside of the cable channels underneath the foam itself. Now obviously in today's video, we are not using the foam insert, we have completely removed it and we're opting to use a more traditional Velcro approach. So to ensure that we still have a very tidy and presentable pedal board, we are going to use Boss's Soderless Patch Cable Kit, which will allow us to cut custom length cables for each pedal individually to ensure that we have very neat cable management. Now the first step to creating a patch cable is simply by connecting one end of the cable to the first pedal and running the cable over to the end destination. This will allow you to measure the perfect length so then you can cut it as accurately as possible. Once you have made the cut, you can then add the second connector to the end of your cable and do not forget to add the screw with the provided tools from Boss so your connection does not become loose. Then you have a complete cable. Boss also provided me with some of their new standard patch cables, which are ideal for simple connections between pedals that don't require a custom length. Now the overall building experience when using Velcro in combination with the BCB90X was surprisingly very easy and very simple. Now if you don't feel very confident in cutting out the foam insert for your pedal shapes, using the Velcro is going to be probably the most ideal solution for you. Now for me personally, I have quite a unique use case for the BCB90X because I'm demoing lots of products here on YouTube Pretty much every single day, I am constantly switching out the pedals on my board for a different video to demonstrate a different setting on some product. So probably in 24 hours time, this pedal board will no longer exist. And with the foam insert, obviously as you've cut out your first initial layout, that means you can't really change that layout beyond that point. So for me, by using the Velcro with the BCB90X does allow me to have a little bit more versatility with what I can do additionally with this pedal board but I do prefer using the foam insert because I don't really like sticking Velcro on my pedals personally, but also when I use the BCB90X in a performance situation, the foam insert ensures my pedals are in the exact same place and the muscle memory is absolutely perfect when I'm using my boss loop stations on all of that type of stuff. So it reduces the amount of times I need to look down at the pedal board. Now what we've done in today's video is pretty unique. We have created two different signal paths on a single pedal board. Now one of my favorite features on the BCB90X are the junction boxes. This just allows you to seamlessly connect your guitar jack cables when you arrive on stage and it allows you to set up a lot faster than on other pedal boards that I've used in the past. Now the cool thing is here, we can connect our guitar on the input junction box. This will go to our tuner pedal and then we're splitting off the signal from this tuner pedal. The output of this tuner pedal is going to this compressor, through to the phaser, and then it's going to my overdrives, then to my wah-wah pedal, and then it's going to my final overdrive pedal that I will use in conjunction with the wah-wah because there's probably a lot of people already saying I shouldn't be putting my overdrives before the wah-wah because you know that's not the way you often do it in a signal chain but in this specific situation it kind of works for me. So when I'm using the wah-wah I will use it in conjunction with this plexi tone to get a really dirty overdriven tone and then this is going to output A on my junction box, which will then go to my main amplifier, which is the Black Star. So that will go to my main guitar amplifier that I use a majority of the time. But using this bypass through here, I am running a Boss Soderless patch cable of a custom length under the Wah Wah pedal, going into this delay pedal over here. And then from this delay pedal, it's going into my RV500 Boss Reverb, and then out of output B, on the junction box. So this means I have two separate outputs that I can send to two different amplifiers. So I can send this to my secondary amplifier, which is a Supro, and this doesn't have any reverbs or anything built into the preamp on this amplifier. So I can use this as a clean amplifier and have 
all of my sort of nice wet effects and my reverbs going to that amplifier for more ambient sections within a performance. And also I can use it in stereo, having a clean and dirty amp and sort of mixing the two together on the front of house if my speaker cabinets are mic'd up. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing for more videos just like this coming very soon on the Boss range of pedal boards.